In this video, we're going to learn about row groups in Apache Parquet. Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. Okay, so a bit of a revision. So Parquet is a column-oriented data file format designed for efficient data storage and retrieval. And in my intro to Parquet video, we basically said that the structure of a file is that we've got columns and column metadata sort of going down the file, and then at the end we've got file metadata. And that's quite a good high-level overview, but in this detail, in this video, we're going to go into more detail. So a Parquet file actually has one or more row groups that will be configurable by the creator of the file, and a row group contains a column chunk for each column in the data set. If we then go down into the column chunk, there will be one or more pages of data. So to summarize, a file contains one or more row groups, a row group contains exactly one column chunk per column, and then a column chunk contains one or more pages. Let's now have a look at an example to understand this a bit better. So Kaggle have a FIFA 2023 data set that contains 10 million records about players and a bunch of stats about them. It's in CSV format, but I've converted it into a parquet. And we're going to explore this file using a command line tool called PQRS. Now, PQRS is a Rust command line tool for inspecting parquet files. And we can start uh, inspecting it by calling PQRS help, and it will show us the list of subcommands. We've got head, we've got schema, we've got row count, and a few others. Let's start by calling that head command. And we can pass in the records flag with one, so get one record indicate that we want it in JSON format and pipe it into JQ. And you can see we get back a record. So this one re is, is, is a Lionel Messi. We can see we've got an image, we've got the shot power, we've got the tags, we've got the club name, and we've got other stuff as well. Now let's have a look at the schema instead. So we can call the schema command and we'll pass in the detailed um, flag too. And if we have a look at that, you can see we've got the column names sort of going through. We've got the player ID, we've got the FIFA update date. Uh, you notice that we've got a primitive um, column type and a logical column type on each of those columns. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see the number of row groups, in this case 10, and then the row group itself. So the first row group, and, we, and it says there are 1 million rows in this row group. We scroll down a tiny bit more, we can see we've got our first column chunk. So this is the column chunk for player ID, and you can see there's a bunch of information, there's a bunch of stats about it, and um, encoding, and the type of the column as well. Now let's explore this further using DuckDB. So we're gonna come over to our DuckDB tab and we're going to call run it write a query that calls the parquet underscore metadata function and passes in our parquet file that then returns one row so it's going to be the same as what we just saw now so this is the column chunk for player id and every record that gets returned here is a column chunk so we're going to have the number of columns multiplied by the number of um, row groups that's how many that's how many rows we're going to have in this table now let's put that into a temporary table, so we'll call it FIFA metadata to make it a little bit easier to query. Now we're gonna do some queries. So we're gonna do a query that we know the answer to. So first, check how many row groups we've got. As you can see, we've got 10, so so far so good. Now let's have a look at the number of records in each row group. So we can write this query, and see we've got nine of the row groups have got a million, just over a million records, and then the last one's got 990,000. So that number of rows is actually the metadata of the row group. I think it is actually possible to have a different number of rows per column chunk. So we can also check the um, sort of the average size based on the num values, which is metadata that comes from the column chunk itself. And so we can write this query instead. Uh, but you can see it's, it's giving basically the, the, the same results. So we can see the average, the minimum, and the maximum are all the same. So yeah, the number of values according to the column and according to the, the row group are exactly the same. So that's so far so good. Let's now choose an individual row group and zoom in on that. So we're gonna pick row group number one. So let's start by counting the number of column chunks in this row group. So we can see we've got 110. So there are 110 columns. Now, how about let's narrow in on one of those. So let's have a look at the date of birth column and we're gonna return the minimum date of birth, the maximum date of birth, and then the type. And so you can see it's an int 32. The minimum value in this particular column chunk for date of birth is in 1967, and then the maximum is, is a date of birth in 2006. How about if we do it for all the row groups? Um, so here you see we got, we've got some slightly different ranges. So for example, if you were doing a search for players who were born let's say after May 2004, the sort of predicate pushdown that many Parquet readers do would be able to skip out a whole load of these columns. So it wouldn't even need to look at row groups two down to nine. It can just look into those top two. So the stats are actually useful for when you're querying. It can work out, hey, do I even need to look at that row group or not? How about let's do another one? So this is value in euros. So you can see we've got, we've got kind of a, a 
they're, they're sort of spread out. They're not they're not ordered by this either. So there's a big big range. I guess if we were searching for very expensive players, uh, then we'd be looking in those row groups at the top, and we could maybe ignore the ones at the bottom. And let's do one more. So this is nationality name, and this one is is sort of all of the nationalities are spread out across all our row groups. So th there wouldn't really be much benefit here for uh, query benefit rather. Uh, so that's the end of this video in which we've learnt about row groups in Apache Parquet. If you found this video useful, take a look at my Parquet playlist for more videos on this topic. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.